everyone, this video is on typhoid fever. The case definition of typhoid fever is divided into clinical and laboratory criteria. For clinical criteria, if the patient has symptoms such as prolonged fever, headache, malaise, loss of appetite, diarrhea or constipation. And the clinical signs also include fever, relative bradycardia, which is an important sign in typhoid fever, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, rose spot, and also there might be respiratory tract infection. Whereas for laboratory criteria includes the isolation of salmonella typhi from blood, stool, or other clinical samples. For pathogenesis of typhoid fever, first the patient ingests, accidentally ingests the salmonella typhi bacteria from contaminated source. And this salmonella typhi are able to avoid phagocytosis by neutrophils. They also have frimbrae to adhere to the payer's patches. And then they will infect the macrophages in the payer's patches and replicate within them. This salmonella is then carried to the lymphatics and reticuloendothelial system, where they will induce apoptosis of the macrophages and then further disseminated to infect other body parts. For example, infecting the gallbladder, and then the bacteria will re-enter the gut and the cycle, the cycle then repeats. The incubation period of typhoid fever is around 3 days to 1 month, where the average incubation period is 8 to 14 days. These are some of the risk factors of getting typhoid fever. If the patient has history of taking outside food, it may be contaminated. Any history of traveling to endemic areas, such as countries with poor sanitation. History of close contact with someone recently infected with typhoid fever. And we have to ask about their social history as well, their living conditions, to assess whether they have poor sanitation, crowding living condition, and poor hygiene habits. The symptoms of typhoid fever, as the name suggests, there is typhoid fever, where there is a characteristic step ladder pattern. So this step ladder pattern fever is described as the fever rising through each day with progressive peaks. So it gets higher and higher. And in the first week, the patient might have abdominal pain, GI symptoms such as constipation or diarrhea, dull frontal headache, loss of appetite, malaise, and dry cough. And at the end of the first week, they might see some rose spot rashes, which is shown in this picture over here. This is seen in around 25% of the cases, and this rose spots is described as salmon colored. The color is like salmon. The size is around 1 to 4 cm, blanching in nature, and it is due to bacterial emboli to the dermis of the skin. In the second week, the fever sustained and the patient might have distended abdomen. And in the third week, if this condition is untreated, the patient will get more toxic and the condition worsens. They may descend into the typhoid state, which is characterized by confusion, delirium, and even psychosis. And there is one sign, which is pea soup diarrhea, is seen in some patients, where there is foul-smelling green-yellow liquid diarrhea. In some patients, it may present in the second week, whereas some present in the third week. Other signs include, other symptoms include hematochesia or melina, and also complications in other organs such as bowel perforation, intestinal hemorrhage, peritonitis, and also myocarditis may develop during the third week. On physical examination, check the vital signs. There is the fidget sign, the relative bradycardia, which is a sign seen in typhoid fever. And on general examination, we have to check the mental status of the patient, expect them, they might be confused or there might be psychosis. Look at their appearance, assess their hydration status, we expect to be dehydrated. Any sign of shock, and also look for rose spots to suggest for typhoid fever. On abdominal examination, any distended abdomen, any signs of peritonitis, and also palpate for hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. 
which might be seen in week two of the disease. Other systemic examinations to look for complications, respiratory system, look for pneumonia, cardiovascular examination, look for myocarditis, where we can try to uh, look for signs of acute decompensation of heart failure, for example, gallop or mitral regurgitation. Look for pericarditis by auscultating for pericardial friction rub. Neurological examination, look out for meningitis, where there will be meningeal irritation such as neck stiffness, headache, and photophobia. For investigation, to diagnose typhoid fever, we have to do cultural isolation of the salmonella typhi. By doing blood culture and sensitivity, stool culture and high rectal swab, or also bone marrow aspirate. However, this bone marrow aspiration is gold standard investigation, but it is not practical because it is an invasive procedure. Other investigations include the PCR test, which is usually used to detect salmonella species among the suspected carriers, such as food handlers. And we can also do specific serology tests, ELISA, to support the diagnosis of typhoid fever, but it should be confirmed with cultures. Investigation to look for complication are full blood count, expect anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia in typhoid fever, liver function test to look for hepatitis, bills to look for electrolyte imbalance inconsistent with the dehydration, imaging studies, KUB x-ray if we suspect for bowel perforation, CT scan and MRI to investigate for any abscess in the liver or bones. For treatment of typhoid fever, we can give antibiotics like azithromycin and or without IV ceftriaxone. For the fever, we can give antibiotics and other treatment and management include fluid hydration and also adequate nutrition. If there is CNS disease involved, we can give dexamethasone. That's all for this video. Thank you.